Hey everyone, today I've got something pretty unusual. I've got a container here that I built uh, full of beer that instead of using carbon dioxide to carbonate, uh, I've used argon to argonate it. Uh, so this is sort of unusual. Beer is um, almost always 100% CO2, uh, but some beers like Guinness uh, are served 75% nitrogen, 25% carbon dioxide. And the purpose is that the nitrogen gives the um, uh, the bubbles a, a different quality. So I'm kind of curious what would happen with argon. Uh, the solubility of argon in water is higher than nitrogen, but much lower than carbon dioxide. So I'll get into the details later, but right now I just want to open this up and see what, it, what the pour looks like and taste it. So I've got 30 pounds of argon in there, and this has been sitting in a refrigerator for about a week. So it's fully, as much as go, is going to dissolve has dissolved. So let me pour some out and see what it looks like. Okay, looks, the bubbles are actually quite large on the surface inside there, so let's see what we've got. Pouring pretty flat. Not a whole lot of head there at all, let's, take, let's try it out. It's pretty much flat beer. So, the argon doesn't introduce any off um, flavors. In fact, there's a small amount of carbonation there, but it's, it's nothing like uh, real carbonation. You wouldn't want to drink a whole glass of that for sure. So what I'm going to do is um, repressurize this to 30 PSI and make sure it's all built up again in terms of argon um, as much argon is going to go in there as possible. And then I'm going to add CO2 to it as well. So I'll empty the chamber and then add CO2 pressure to help that dissolve. So I think the combination of carbon dioxide and argon might produce the best result, which makes sense since, you know, Guinness figured out that doing 75% nitrogen, 25% CO2 is actually the ideal ratio for that beer, I guess. Uh, but people argue about it. It could be half-half and whatnot. So let me show you how I built this thing. This is a, uh, a stainless steel water bottle that I got from the hardware store for like $10. And uh, the cap it came with um, was hollow. So I was kind of worried about modding it because I want this to hold 30 PSI and that hollow cap, I, we really wouldn't be able to use a, a pipe tap or anything in there to tap that. So instead, I started with a, uh, a solid piece of Delrin and uh, turned it down and faced it and then I got a parting tool and um, shaped the parting tool such that it matched the threads on the existing cap. You know, I, I ground it down and then kind of, you know, smoothed the corners a bit. And then I mounted the parting tool in the lathe and used it just like a threading tool. So it kind of looks like an Acme thread, even though it isn't, it's just a square cut thread. Uh, and then threaded the part using the parting tool. And then I, uh, you know, turned it down a little bit more and knurled the top, uh, drilled a couple holes in the top and tapped them with pipe thread taps and added a gauge to it and added a, uh, a brass uh, valve to it so that I could connect gas to it and then shut the valve and seal the chamber off. <clears throat> and then I filled the thing up with homebrew from my stainless steel homebrew kettle and uh, added argon to it from my welding tank. So I realized this isn't, you know, medical grade breathable gas or whatever, but really I'm just going to have a couple sips of this and I don't think that's going to be a problem if there's a little oil vapor or something in there. So here I am pressure testing the vessel. I got about 50 PSI in there and um, one really unexpected consequence is that the bottle doesn't stand up anymore because the bottom is uh, bowed out a little bit. <laughs> so I, I didn't actually take a careful look at this, but I suspect it had a slight kick in so that it would always sit flat on a table. And now it doesn't have that anymore, so it doesn't stand up anymore. So I'll have to either build another base or just live with it or something. But I'm gonna leave this amount of pressure in here for a while and see if there's any leaks, which I don't think there are. So after filling it up with argon, I put it in the fridge and lowered the temperature of the beer and the pressure dropped from about, you know, 35 PSI, maybe down to about 25, indicating that 
the, that argon had gone into solution into the beer. And then I took it back out to the garage, filled it back up to 35 PSI with argon, put it back in the refrigerator, and it dropped down to maybe 30 or 32. So the, the liquid is basically fully uh, saturated with argon at that temperature. And as far as I know, the reason that Guinness is served with a nitrogen mix is that the, the nitrogen isn't as soluble as the carbon dioxide. So when you can serve the beer at a higher pressure using that nitrogen to force it out of the tap without over-carbonating the beer. So Guinness is typically uh, has a lower volume of CO2 dissolved in it. And you, you can use that nitrogen to force it out of the tap to churn it up and give it that nice frothy head without, you know, forcing carbon dioxide into the beer and then making it way too foamy, way too uh, acidic. One of the tricks with carbon dioxide is that when it hits your tongue, it forms carbonic acid, or when it's in solution, when it's in water, it forms carbonic acid. And that's why uh, carbonated water tastes different from flat water, and also why beer tastes rather nasty when it's flat and quite good when it's carbonated. Okay, so I think I will follow up by uh, adding some CO2 to this and, uh, and argon and see what we can get out of it. But as it stands, argon by itself is really not enough to make a decent beer.